Hi guys, um, I've not really done a video like this. I used to do a video format called Coffee Time with Cobra, and I used to film it in the back garden um, when I lived in Utah with this. This is my trusty Samsung HMX F80. This thing lasted me for decades. I bought this thing almost 10 years ago. You can't buy this anymore. Um, unless it's for parts, etc, etc. Um, the, I think the battery's dead in this. No, no, I did charge it. Yeah, see, but it won't hold the info. And the shutter's broken. And, yeah, you can't use it as like a webcam or anything. So I was going to set it up and use it as like a, a webcam, webcam kind of thing. But you can't do that. It won't leave a full screen. So I'm going to just put that on the bed right now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to do, I'm, I'm relaunching Coffee Time with Cobra. And so this is the inaugural relaunch, if you will, of Coffee Time with Cobra. Now, I have a cup of coffee here. Coffee cup, this is coffee cup, sir. <sighs> Love it. And uh, I'm just going to rant about some things that's been going on in my life. And um, give you guys a little fill-in. Um, I'm no longer in the United States, you can probably tell, um, I'm back in the UK, I'm in a small town just outside of London called Reading, um, yes I know I look like Billy Butcher from The Boys, you know, oh bollocks him, there you go, um, I actually got asked at my previous job if I was ever gonna cosplay as him, because they know I cosplay. And I'm like, no, 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 no. If I was going to go as someone, I wouldn't go as Billy Butcher. Um, so I was thinking about going as a uh, bounty hunter. Not a Mandalorian, an actual bounty hunter. Um, so there's that. Uh, being, I've gotten really, like, crazy balls deep into 3D printing. Uh, I'm not even kidding. I mean, I'm, I'm 3D printing proxies for Chaos Armies. That's a... Chaos Deem Prince of Nurgle proxy. Um, I've got bursts. This one is Incredible Hulk. Sorry about the poor lighting. But uh, that says they come that scale. And then I scale them up to something like this. So it's one more paintable on stream. I am back to streaming. Uh, there's a Karma Betrayer proxy for my uh, corn army that I'm working on. Um, so I'm planning on doing a corn army, and then of course this is my, uh, Chaos Nurgle, not a Titan, but, um, War Machine, or whatever the hell they're called, but that's the torso, it's not finished yet, I'm still putting the, I've got the, everything's already, already 3D printed, this happens to be the largest model of my 3D printers printed, so I've got the legs here, I've got the torso here, um, and I've just finished doing all the armor plates and everything else. The wings are sort of from a different model. I just figured they look very flyish, so I'd add them. Um, it's actually quite heavy because it's not hollowed. Well, the, the torso is hollowed, but the armor panels are quite thick, so they've got a lot bit of weight to them. So, uh, and I've got to think about three D printing the the base for it too. So I'm actually literally going to be three D printing the entire thing from the base, all the entire miniature. Anyway, um. A lot has happened. Um, I've been here now going on five years. Not in this exact place, but I've been here two years. But now I've been in the UK now since 2018. So 2018, 2019, 2020, 21, 22. So four years, sorry. Four years. Um, I'm actually going to have a biscuit. I mean, it is coffee time with Cobra, so I'm actually going to have a biscuit. And if you're wondering why am I looking off camera, it's because I've got a monitor up there, a telly, that's got my OBS and stuff on. So. And, um, 
So yeah, I moved to be with a girl, then we split up, and now I'm thinking about moving back up north, um, but not till I've got a bit more money underneath me, so I can afford my own place, and this flat sharing thing I'm doing right now. I'm sharing a five bedroom house with five other dudes, myself included, and yeah, I'm just not happy with it. I want my own private space, you know, my own kitchen, my own bathroom, my own whatever, so I can do whatever. And the only, play I can, only, only way I can do that is to move up north. Um, London is just off the table. London has gotten so expensive to live, even the, lo the locals can't live there. And, um, yeah, so, is what it is. As you guys know, I'm from SE15. Represent. Um, I can't even afford to live there. My daughter lives there. Um, everyone keeps asking me about my, my children. And I keep telling you, um, when, I live, when I first started live streaming, people were like, do you have kids? I'm like, yeah. But I didn't tell anyone. I, told, I did tell one of my moderators who, ends up, who ended up backstabbing me. And uh, created a whole bunch of Twitch accounts with derogatory names about my two two daughters. Wasn't happy about that. I was extremely childish. But I'm doing good. Um, I am on a lot of medication. Um, <clears throat> I've got phylloxacillin to deal with the infection that possibly could be turning into cancer um, I'll know more once I've spoken to my uh, doctors about it I'm on antidepressants that are too strong well they, they're they not doing their job as an antidepressant but they're doing their job as what they were meant to do um, see it wasn't an originally designed as an antidepressant it was originally designed as a tablet to help people transition from men to women and women to men And so, my body thinks I'm trying to become a, ma a woman. So, my testosterone levels are a little bit uh, uh, ultra low from where they should be. So, my doctor said, no more, you know, 60 milligrams, which is the legal max you can take as a human being, otherwise you're going to die. Um, he wants me to cut down to 20 milligrams and leave at 20. Which means I've got to go, go from 20 to 40. Then 40 to 20, then stay at 20. Oh, good. It's like 6 a.m. in the morning. You yeah, literally just turned 5.59, so it's 6 a.m. Now I'm normally starting to stir at about 4.30, 5 o'clock. Uh, can't help it, it's military in me. Again, everyone keeps asking about the um, Russia-Ukraine thing. But here's my two cents on it. I think it's I think it's silly all wars are silly don't get me wrong as a veteran myself did kick off and shoot at people that I had no hatred for I didn't even know but because our leaders and their leaders didn't get along they're sending us to fight each other. And there were days when, I know for a fact, I saw one guy who was in a village helping the people of that village. Yet two weeks ago, I saw him shooting at us with a Russian RPK. And by rights, I could have walked up to him and arrested him. That he must have had a change of heart or a a moral of com a conflict in his morals or something because he came up to us he went to our interpreter and said that yes he used to fight for Saddam's forces but he saw what Saddam's plans was and whatnot and he had a complete change of heart and now he's here to help he apologized up and down profusely 
I looked at him and said, I apologise if, if we killed any of your friends, you know, uh, and whatnot. And I said to him, just make sure that your family, you know, your wife, your children, your mother, your, you know, your brothers, or whatnot, you know, who, who are civilians, just to make sure that, you know, get them out, you know, go to somewhere safe, somewhere else. Stay in country, just go to a different town, you know, go where there isn't conflict for a bit, you know, and understand that we're not here. It's not a personal thing. The soul, you know, we don't personally hate you. It's our leaders versus your leaders. So you, if you talk to your leaders and we talk to our leaders, this conflict will end. And I genuinely think, excuse me, I genuinely think that if Zelensky and Putin just sit down and talk, a lot could get done. Not, not, not negotiators, because negotiators always want something for themselves. Whether it be fame, whether it be money, whether it be whatever. I mean, literally, Zelensky, him, left alone in a room. No weapons, no, no, no hot mics, no nothing. Just them two, and they, and a bottle of vodka, you know, or whatever the, or whiskey, or whatever it is that that is their. their uh, for me, it's Jameson's. I'm not even joking. Not no sponsored. You know, it's me. It's Jameson's. Um, oh, of course. One time I go to put a bottle down and it falls over. Party foul. And talk it out, you know. But when one side, and I'm not saying one side in particular, I'm not saying it's Putin and I'm not saying it's Zelensky, but when one side, uh, when one side is adamant about the destruction of something or someone or anything, you know, it, it, it's. It's the same with religion. Now, for me, I don't care if you're Christian. I don't care if you're Muslim. I don't care if you're Hindu. I don't care if you're Sikh. I don't care what your religious belief is. I don't care if the, your prophet is Allah or Jesus or whatever. I don't care who your messenger is. Did you get the damn message? That's what I care about. Okay? Okay. That's all I need to say. How, and that's another question. This question came to me by one of my moderators a long time ago. And I said to him I'd answer it at a later time. And well, there's no, no time like the better. So this answer's for you, Pandemics. Pandemics once answered me, how is it possible for a soldier to be religious and be a soldier? Well, what the hell do you think we've got priests? What do you think we have, we, we literally ha have... Uh, uh, um, <laughs> we have combat priests um, they have taken a role to be non-violent same as Corman's medics Corman's and medics originally from World War I all the way through World War II most of them didn't carry firearms um, there were a few that were combat medics now a combat medic and a Corman are two different people a corpsman is solely a medic first, soldier second. A combat medic is soldier first, medic second. Okay? Again, people keep getting these two confused. When, like, for example, in, in, in Saving Private Ryan, you'd hear soldiers yell, Corman! It means they need a medic. And if that medic says, not looking too good. And just like in real life, they would put a X on their forehead. Even... Though they're alive, screaming, mummy, mummy, daddy, daddy, whatever. They're either lost too much blood, their wounds become infected, or the damage is so great, i.e. they've been shot in their liver, they've been shot in their stomach, they've been shot somewhere where the bullet is too deep for the corpsman to get to it without causing an infection or causing more damage. It was up to that CO whether or not to give him the Emperor's Mercy, is what they call it in 40k. Which is why in um, Fury, when you see one of the Sherman, e, is it, I think it's an E2. It's an M4A1, I think it was an E, it's not, no, it can't be a Jumbo. So it must be... I want to say it's... I want to say it's a jumbo. No, 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 it wasn't. It 
it was an EZ8, but it had the A1 turret. Sorry. Um, that was the, the, the lead tank in the Lance that got shot with the Panzerfaust. Because the moron saw the kids with the, 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 the rocket launcher and didn't shoot them. And, um, yeah, the, the tank caught fire. Because, yes, there was a reason why they were called Tommy Cookers. Uh, the tank caught fire and... and the 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 I it was either with the driver or the loader no it was either it was the loader or the TC gets out while he's on fire pulls out his sidearm puts it to his head and pulls the trigger because he knew that the pain was going to be so great he knew that the injuries were un unsustainable um, various other things there were a lot of COs that would say to soldiers that have just joined their unit if you fall behind you're left behind. We're marching. We're going to Berlin. And it's it, it, it's a forward fight, which means the enemy's in a retreat, a fighting retreat, which means they're going to be pockets of resistance to slow us down, which means they're not shooting to kill, they're shooting to wound, they're shooting to slow us down. But we've got to push. The tanks have to push. The infantry has to push. Infantry protect tanks. Tanks protect infantry. That's how it fucking works, even in today's military. It's a shame people in, in, in heroes and generals don't seem to fucking understand that. But, um, same as in um, enlisted, people in enlisted don't seem to understand that. Um, this is where people are like, how the hell do you go 96 and 2? Put me in a Panzer 3 and you'll find out. Um, but, ultimately... How did I handle being in combat and being somewhat religious? I used to see our, our chaplain all the time. And I would tell him my problems. And his response would usually be drink on it or pray on it. Sometimes both. Have a bit of a pray, then have a drink. If you didn't get the answer you wanted. Well, did it ever stop me from pulling the trigger? No. Have I killed other human beings? Yes, I have. Does it haunt me? Yes, it does. But I'm alive to see my daughter grow, to see her have children, become a granddad, which I have become. I'm, I'm, I'm technically a grandfather. But... I'm alive. And I don't mean that in, in, ha ha ha, I'm alive, you're dead, kind of way. So, pandemics, to answer your question, it was a struggle daily. I hope that answers your question. It literally was a struggle daily, my friend. Okay. Um, I think that's the only question that my mods have asked me that I've, had a hard time trying to contextualize and, and that's, that's, you know, that's a good word contextualize I like that word contextualize um, yes the beard is growing in nice and thick um, I am still in the reserves I am in the hundred I'm in the the 60 thick 66th regiment um, based out of, of Grantham um, it is a non-combat regiment um, veterans who have seen combat, if they do go into reserves, are 90% of the time not put in a combat regiment. Not because they don't want to pass on their wisdom or whatever to this other unit. It's because sometimes just because we've been declared non-combat effective, what that means is it means that we are still effective in, in a sense to the army. We're useful to the army. But we would be a detriment if we were put in combat. I.e. some of us have PTSD or shell shock or whatever you want to call it. Um, some of us have DCO, D, DIS, uh, uh, DID, um, disassociation something disorder, um, where shit kicks off and all of a sudden we, we become Rambo or Ghost or Soap McTavish or whatever, and it's hard to reel us in. Um, and, like I said, uh, so it's a non combat division which means we make the MREs and various other meals 
it's basically just a fancy chef school. Um, several Michelin star chefs actually, ironically, have left the 66th Regiment and gone on to be some very successful restaurateurs. Um, but that's what I do. So sometimes I catch the train to Grantham. I've got some tickets over there. Uh, where are they? Here they go. I'm not even joking. So I've got train tickets here. This is a an adapted slip. Uh, seat reservation. This is from from Grantham to King's Cross. See. So, like I said, I uh, go to and from sometimes uh, when needed. This whole conflict in the Ukraine and whatnot. Like I said, if if the leaders just sat down and expressed their true desires, like. If if Putin wants the Ukraine back in the Russian Federation or whatever you want to call it, he's not going to drop nukes. Okay, this this is the biggest fear. Oh, he's going to drop low yield nukes. No, he's not. He'll drop probably thermobaric weapons, which is different. A thermobaric weapon is a weapon that will literally suck all the. Okay, if you've ever seen the movie Contagion, they use a simulated thermobaric barrier weapon. On a village that is supposed to have a an outbreak that they can't contain, and what that does is it it fires in, explodes instead of it being a shock wave where it pushes everything away, it's reverse. It sucks everything in, air included, oxygen included. So it literally sucks everything in for like zero point zero one of a second. So basically, a little. It, it, technically, it isn't, but it, it, the best way to visualize it is a little mini black hole opens up sucks everything in and then burns it all instantly with like a, 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 a hence the thermite barrier um which is like i think it's like one percent of the sun's surface so literally it's like for a fraction of, of, of faster than a blink of a human eye the planet goes whoop and touches the sun okay so everything in a set explosive radius is instantly turned to glass Okay, uh, if you're a comic book geek, um, that's the sort of power Johnny Storm has. Okay, everyone keeps asking who's the most powerful member of the Fantastic Four. Johnny Storm. Okay, don't get me wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Susan Storm can do the whole fucking, you know, I can put a fucking telepathic bubble in your brain and kill you. Uh, yeah, or in your heart and kill you. Yeah, 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 she could. However, before her thoughts could even manifest that, Johnny Storm can literally turn it to glass. If he wanted to. He could turn Mr. Fantastic to glass. He could turn fucking Thing to glass. Okay? The strongest member on the Fantastic Four is Johnny Storm. By hands. He's, he's way above Omega level. Um, strongest um, X-Men. Let's see. Strongest X-Men. It's not Wolverine. Everyone goes, ah, oh, it's got to be Wolverine. That's not Wolverine. It's not Colossus either. Even with Juggernaut's uh, Gemma Kidderack, which was... Jugger Colossus or Colossal Jugger or whatever you want to call it. It's basically Colossus and Juggernaut f fused into one. Um, uh, was it Thor, Hammer of the Gods or something? Issue six, uh, Hulk gets a hammer. Um, these, these hammers are all corrupted. So when you pick them up instead of becoming Thor, you become a different follower of one of the old old ones. Uh, Hulk picks it up and becomes like War, but technically not when he was. The, go, uh, the Horseman War for Apocalypse. Anyway, anyway, long story short. Uh, so the strongest member of the X Men. It's not Charles. It's not Charles Xavier, because Jean Grey can stop him. It's not Cyclops. Ooh, I shoot optic blasts. Okay, and you know martial arts. Okay. Um, it's not Jubilee. Gambit. If Gambit hadn't lobotomized part of his brain, he would be able to super. Super ch conduct charge the planet and blow it up. He could literally just keep pumping kinetic energy into the planet Earth and then just explode it away like one huge playing card. Um, he realized how powerful he was because he was holding back when he was charging his playing cards and causing them to explode. And then I think it was House of Story of X. Or Ten of X? I can't remember what one. Um, it was a Jonathan Hickman a comic. I remember that. He overcharged one of his playing cards and threw it. And then the explosion took out an entire building. One card. 
And that's when we realised, because uh, he was losing control of his powers. Even Xavier tried diving into his mind to help him shut him down. Didn't work. Like it did with Wolverine because Wolverine went savage when his adamantium got pulled out of him by Magneto. So Xavier went into his brain and turned him into like this weird hybrid pet thing. Um, yeah, so that kind of sucked. Uh, but, yeah, I, I would have to say that, that it, it, it would be either... Because even Rogue can't drain that much energy. She would physically explode. Uh, Storm, you know, oh, I can make lightning, okay, and you can make it rain or snow or whatever, congratulations. Um, so yeah, it, it would have to be Gambit. Uh, strongest Avenger. Oh. Let's see. On brute strength, no contest, Hulk. Thor is the second strongest. Thor's recognized this, Hulk's recognized this. Um, on multiple occasions, even though in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Chris Evans is like, you know, strongest Avenger. No, you're not the strongest Avenger. Hulk is the strongest Avenger. You're not even the most fighting capable Avenger. That goes to Black Widow. Then Captain America, believe it or not. Yes, Cap Black Widow could be Captain America in a hand-to-hand -hand fight. Okay, sorry. Can, don't argue with me on this. I'm a huge Captain America freak. I love my cat. Cat's my boy. In fact, if I was to let my sides grow out a bit more, because I keep shaving them down, if I was to let these grow out some more, I could cosplay as Chris Evans as Captain America. I actually even wanted to do that at London Comic Con before this stupid coof came out. Um, I even have a friend who's a who does cosplay and does uh, Instagram modeling. And she cosplays, and she asked me, because she wanted to go as uh, Sharon Carter, and she wanted me to go as Captain Rogers, kind of thing. And I said to her, since they did the whole what if Marvel thing, she could go as Captain Britain, and I could go as Captain America, kind of thing. Uh, so we, we, that's up in the air. We're, we're thinking about doing that at one of the, the, the cons, probably London Con or Manchester. We're not sure yet. But anyway, um, what else? I've ranted like crazy. This 27 minutes of me ranting. I'm sorry. But, um, yeah, I just, I'm back to streaming, um, which is good. I stream about 5.36 p.m. UK time. Um, Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays are my guaranteed days. Uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays are my what -ifs. Weekends are my own. So Saturday, Sundays, there's no streams. Um, I, that's when I record YouTube content. There is going to be a... A Ghostbusters Afterlife review uh, video is coming to the channel soon. I haven't I haven't filmed it yet, but it is coming. So bear with me, um, because man, they will. I'm not going to spoil it, but people were cutting onions up in this room. All right? It, it then the, the geek nostalgia in me, the 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 huge freaking um, Ghostbusters fanboy in me because I had all the action figures and I mean all of them I had the Stay Puft Marshmallow Melon I had the, the actual action figures like two three times I've had three Egons three fucking Slimers I had so many I used to purposely go to car boot sales which pisses me off because it's like no car boot sales anymore but I used to go to car boot sales and specifically go straight to the to the, the guys that I knew that sold sold action figures and I would pick up G.I. Joe, mostly Cobra figures, or G.I. Joe, Star Wars, mostly mostly Imperial. And I would pick up any Ghostbusters toys or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toys that they had. And I would play with them. you got to understand, these are used toys. They're not new in the box. Okay? I do have a new in the box sound wave on its way to me. Not as in, it's like, it, it's an original sound wave from the 80s. Still in the box. Still with the stickers. Never been touched. That's on its way to me. Um, to go in my collection. I'm actually, like I said, when I lived in the States, as you guys know, I had an entire wall full of, of action figures still in the packaging. You know, ranging from Clone Troopers to, to Captain America to, to, to Christ knows what else. And I loved it. I absolutely uh, loved it. And... When I get into my own place, I plan on doing that. People are collecting pop vinyls. Fuck the pop vinyls. I don't want to give me my action figures back. 
you know, give me my, my, I'm still trying to get a hold of my ex in North Carolina to get my Star Wars action figures sent to me because I've got a huge Darth Vader, original Kenner Darth Vader head, full of action figures, including the mail-in only Emperor Palpatine, still in the original Kenner wrapping, never touched by human fucking hands, and is worth an absolute fucking fortune to collectors. Um, same as the at uh, uh, um, ATST and at at pilots. Again, I've got several of those still wrapped in the original Kenner wrappings, never touched by human hands because they were mail or mail order only as well. I've got like two of each in that collection. I've got two uh, two IG eighty eights, uh, one Boba Fett. The Boba Fett alone is is collected collectible by everyone because everyone's a huge Boba Fett fan, especially with the book of Boba Fett. Even though yes, the show is a bit pants. Um, the end of the day, I think that that, that that with it only being the first season of the book of Boba Fett, I'm pretty goddamn sure that it's going to get grittier and darker and whatnot as, as time progresses. Um, and, and I hope it does. No, this isn't about the book of Boba Fett. This isn't about Star Wars in general. This is just about just fun in general. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it. My coffee's almost gone, guys. So you know how this video ends, right? When the coffee's gone, the video's done. So, But if you have any questions or any comments, throw them in the, the comment section down below in the video. That's what it's for. Um, otherwise, you can always watch me on Twitch, twitch.com slash deceptive cobras. Um, yeah, um, links will be somewhere in the video description or, or someone will be able to link you it. Uh, well, I'm on Discord. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I am not on TikTok. I do not have a TikTok. I do not want to be on TikTok. Um, can't stand TikTok. Um, I'm even thinking about going as uh, cosplaying as Ghost, actually, from... Uh, from Call of Duty, because I've got the bandana, I've got the glasses, I don't have the contacts, but I can get them, um, it's just an M4 with an L can that he used, um, which didn't make any sense, because an L can is a 2X and a 4X on a 5.56, which, neither here nor there, um, but yeah, so, like I said, guys, and, um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you over there on Twitch, and, um, yeah, I'm going to finish this little bit of coffee, so, coffee's gone, this video's done, till then guys, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.